Well, good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to you today as we begin our time of prayer once more. Today is Thursday the 28th of January and today in the church we remember St Thomas Aquinas. The saints days are coming thick and fast at the moment. Thomas was one of the very greatest theologians of the medieval times and uh, probably therefore the bane of schoolboys in late medieval and early Renaissance Europe who will have been forced to study uh, his works. Uh, but anyway, here's a little bit about Thomas Aquinas. He has been described as the greatest thinker and teacher of the medieval church, born at Rocca Secca near Aquino in Italy. Thomas was educated first by the Benedictines at Monte Cassino and then at the University of Naples. Against his family's wishes, he joined the Dominican Order of Preachers. His profound theological wisdom and capacity to impart this, as well as in homilies as in hymns, along with his gentleness of spirit in dealing with all, earned him the title The Angelic Doctor. He died on the 7th of March 1274 en route to the Council of Lyon and his feast has been celebrated on this day since 1970. Now having heard a little bit about Thomas, I need to say good morning and a proper welcome to everyone who is part of our congregation today and particularly uh, and now to those who are joining live to Elizabeth and Lizzie and Angie and Suzanne, very good morning to all of you. And to those who are joining a little bit later, you are most welcome as well. Maybe you've got some tasks to do today. Uh, maybe you have a particular time in the day when you join in and pray. So uh, welcome to uh, you as well. As ever, we're going to begin by lighting our candle and just pausing for a moment or two as we open our hearts to the flame of Christ. God, creator of light, at the rising of your sun this morning, let the greatest of all lights, your love, rise like the sun within our hearts. Amen. I think I'm going to need a new candle. This wick has got very low. Let's see how we go. just about hanging on in there. Well let's begin then with our order for morning prayer that was put up on the Facebook page. If you've got that with you then do join in as appropriate. O Lord open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. From the rising of the sun to its setting your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the world. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. The night has passed, the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 
Well, my brothers and sisters, let's turn to our psalm now, or this week we're using Psalm 46. If you can see the words in front of you, then do join in as we pray this together. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea. Though the waters rage and swell, and though the mountains quake at the towering seas, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in uproar, and the kingdoms are shaken. But God utters his voice, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come. And behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he has wrought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in all the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let's turn to our reading and uh, continuing to read through St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. There we're at chapter 11 verse 2 and uh, uh, a warning this is uh, something of a controversial reading. So um, let's listen to uh, the words of St Paul. I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions just as I handed them on to you. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the husband is the head of the wife, and God is the head of Christ. Any man who prays or prophesies with something on his head disgraces his head. But any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled disgraces her head. It is one and the same thing as having her head shaved. For if a woman will not veil herself, then she should cut off her hair. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or to be shaved, she should wear a veil. For a man ought not to have his head veiled, since he is the image and reflection of man. Indeed, man was not made for woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for the sake of woman, but woman for the sake of man. For this reason a woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man or man independent of woman. For just as woman came from man, so man comes through woman. But all things come from God. Judge for yourselves, is it proper for woman to pray to God with her head unveiled? Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is to, uh, teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is degrading to him, but if a woman has long hair, it is her glory, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if anyone is disposed to be contentious, 
we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I told you it was a controversial reading and uh, I'm sure that Sam, when he planned the uh, Facebook uh, rota, um, had a look at it and thought, I'll give that one to Richard. So um, if that's the case, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, it's a controversial reading. So, uh, so we need to remember that St. Paul was addressing a particular point in worship, uh, a particular point of uh, know, what was happening in, a, in the Corinthian church. Uh, this passage has been used to justify so many things over the years about the place of men and women and what should happen in church, uh, uh, forgetting that it, it was for a particular historical and contra controversy. Um, so uh, I think it is still, uh, still reads very uneasily, doesn't it? And perhaps all I can say is thank goodness uh, that we have moved on since then. I want to turn to the psalm though because we've been reading Psalm 46 uh, all this week and it's a wonderful psalm and if you read it there's, there's a lot of action. There, there's, we talk about the sort of maelstrom and the wind and the waves roaring and, uh, and everything is happening. The waters rage and swell, the mountains quake at the towering seas, the nations are in uproar, the kingdoms are shaken and it can feel very much like uh, it's a bit like that at the moment everything seems to be happening and uh, we are weighed down with the weight of covid deaths we are hearing about all the arguments about the vaccine and yet uh, amidst all that uh, quaking and roaring uh, there's that fixed still point in the psalm that's summed up by that wonderful verse be still and know that I am God. And if we can just have that stillness and that focus on God as our fixed point, uh, it's amazing uh, just what will fall into place. Let's pray. Be still and know that I am God, says the psalmist. Lord, on this day, this week, in this week, in this year, when the nations are in uproar, the kingdoms are being shaken, help us to have you as our fixed point. navigate around your stillness, your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, as we remember today St. Thomas Aquinas, we thank you for all those who enrich and enlarge our vision of you through their thinking, through their hymns, through their sermons, through their writing and speaking. Father God, we pray today for our young people, for those who are being homeschooled and maybe struggling to access the internet or to concentrate or just to be motivated. Pray for the teachers working so hard to put together this new way of learning and to keep in contact with the students and children. Pray for the school leaders. For Paul and for Denise and Sue, for Gavin and David in our local area. We pray particularly for those children and young people who may be vulnerable today, vulnerable to neglect or harm. Care for them, Lord. 
may people or people of goodwill be able to find them and reach out to them and bring comfort and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today, Lord, too, for our church building, for those who will come into them to seek solace, to find that stillness amidst the uproar going on. Pray that they may find there your loving presence. We pray for all who have care of our church buildings, for our church wardens, and we give thanks for all that they offer. Pray for David Sisson and Mike Gelder in, in their roles for Holy Trinity and St Mary's. Pray that we may use our church buildings for your glory and for the benefit of the whole community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for our church communities. We pray today, Lord, for the people of Holy Trinity, and especially for Jenny and David and Jacob and Theo and Finley, for Nigel and Victoria, for Bill and Sue. We pray for Catherine and Paul, for Bill and Charlie, for Joe, for Rob. We pray for Paul, for Julia and Nick. We pray for Peter and Jill and their family. We pray for David, for Bun, David and Charles. We pray for Roz. We pray for Debbie and John. We pray for Peter and Margaret, for Anne, for Janet and John, for Chris, Karen, Emily, Sarah, Laura and Tim and for Jean and Alan, Sam and Be Becky and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for ourselves this day. In all that we say and all that we do, we pray for the people we will meet, the conversations we'll have. And ask for your blessing upon us and that we may be a blessing to others. So we keep silent for a time and offer up to God all that is on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this is a prayer written by St Thomas Aquinas. O Creator, past all telling, you have appointed from the treasure of your wisdom the hierarchies of angels, disposing them in wondrous order above the bright heavens, and have so beautifully set out all parts of the universe. You we call the true fount of wisdom and the noble origin of all things. Be pleased to shed on the darkness of mind in which I was born the twofold beam of your light and warmth to dispel my ignorance and sin. You make eloquent the tongues of children. Then instruct my speech and touch my lips with graciousness. Make me keen to understand quick to learn, able to remember. Make me dedicate to inter delicate to interpret and ready to speak. Guide my going in and going forward. Lead home my going forth. You are true God and true humanity and live forever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that brings us to the end of our time of prayer today. Uh, uh, I just need to say uh, welcome to, uh, there were lots of names uh, coming up on the screen, uh, lots of people joining live today and I've uh, missed most of them I'm afraid, uh, so uh, hopefully I can just have a, a quick look and be able to say good morning to Eddie, to Mary, to Venetia, to Janet, to Susie and to Helen and uh, to Tracy, um, saw you were there as well. So. Uh, good morning to lots of people today. Um, don't forget that those of you who are sort of part of our Isle of Webmore congregation, the newsletter uh, comes out, our email newsletter that comes out weekly will be out today or possibly tomorrow morning, so do look out for that. Lots of uh, uh, what the readings are, sort of information about the services and uh, what's likely to be happening in the future as well when it comes to our services. If you don't yet receive the e-newsletter and would like to be kept in touch with what goes on here, then please do email at stmarywedmore at gmail.com or maybe message us through our Facebook page and ask to be put on that. Our service this weekend will be one that focuses particularly on Candlemas. The end of the Epiphany and Christmas season is on February the 2nd and if you've not yet taken down your decorations that's the day to do it, to take down your crib and pack them away for another year. It's sort of the end of Christmas and we begin to look forward to Lent and to uh, the events of uh, Christ's Passion. So uh, February the 2nd is Candle Mass. We'll be celebrating, marking that this weekend with a special service uh, coming from Allerton. Mike Gelder will be our preacher. So look out for that. That will be on the YouTube channel for Sunday morning for us to join in and watch and participate from our own homes with that. I'll be back, uh, no I think, uh, Mike Buick, I think we'll be back tomorrow morning for some prayer at nine o'clock and in the meantime as ever everyone take care and God bless.